Hi, I'm Reverend Greg and I welcome you to this video in the tutorial series Shaders for Hobby Programmers. Today's video is called Reverend Greg Presents Fun with Flags and we're going to create this flag distortion shader. To do this we're going to use a distortion map as we did in the heat haze shader and the code is actually extremely close as well. The math is really simple and the complex part is handled by the map. But as always a short disclaimer first. This tutorial series is mainly for hobby programmers who struggle with understanding shaders. I'm not a professional programmer and I'm not very good at maths. So if you see any mistake in my video or see a better way to solve a problem, please add a comment so everyone can learn from you. Let's start with a short recap of the basics on distorting with a map. This was the heat haze fragment shader code. And this our leopard pattern already stretched across the surface. To create a VEC2 distort, we picked a sample from this texture. This was our base image and the application surface. To get a distortion value for the distortion along the x-axis, we multiplied the texture coordinates with the size factor to scale the pattern up and added a time summon to constantly move the pattern upwards. And to get a distortion value for the distortion along the y-axis, we multiplied the texture coordinates to scale the pattern down and added another time summon to scroll it upwards at a different speed. Then we used that VEC2 distort to offset the texture coordinates where we take a sample from the base texture. The more red there is on the pattern, the more the fragments are distorted along the x-axis. And the more green there is on the pattern, the more the fragments are distorted along the y-axis. The flag distortion will follow the same principle as the heat haze distortion. We're using size, time and strength uniforms to change VV text code take a distort sample from there, then take a sample from the base texture at the original VV text code offset by distort. All map distortions pretty much work like that. The difference really mainly is on how size, time and strength change VV text code to get the distort sample and what the distort texture looks like. So let's have a look at those changes for the flag distortion. First of all, we're going to use more uniforms, mainly because like this we can keep the flag animation more dynamic. There's still the float time and float strength, and there's still a uniform size, but this time it's a VEC4. We're going to use two different distortion patterns and we'll be able to change the scale of both patterns in both axes. Then there's the float R or G, which stands for red or green, and will be used to mix those two distortion patterns. R or G is going to be the mix amount. And finally, we've got the float spec to add some specularity. Now the main function. First an overview to get some context. We'll again get a distortion variable from the distortion texture at some coordinates derived from VV text code, bit manipulated by size and time. We'll also get a third sample from that texture to tie the flag to the flagpole. We'll calculate an offset from those samples and the effect strength uniform. And then get the sample from the base texture at VV text code plus this offset. Now we got a distorted flag. The last step will be to brighten or darken the color based on the distortion to add some depth to the flag. Now let's go over this code step by step. First we need to get the distortion. As mentioned, this is very similar to what we did in the heat haze distortion. We pick a color from a distortion map at the base texture's VV text code manipulated by a size factor to scale the distortion pattern and a time summoned to scroll it. So this is our distortion map. And the first obvious difference is that the map is not monochromatic anymore. And this is the first distortion line. The distort variable is now a float instead of a VEC2, which means we'll distort the same amount in the x-axis as in the y-axis. And as you can see, we're taking a sample from the distortion map, but only from the red channel. And this is what the red channel looks like. It doesn't have to be exactly like that, but it has to be blurry, seamlessly tileable, and have more or less vertical lines or areas. And there shouldn't be any large pure red or pure black areas either. If you don't know how to create blurry tileable maps like this, you can watch the last few minutes of the heat haze tutorial video. So we're taking a sample from the red channel at VB text code times size xy plus vec2 negative time and time. Since size xy is a vec2, we can scale the x and y of the pattern by different factors. And since the time summoned is negative for the x coordinate and positive for the y coordinate, we're scrolling the pattern to the right and up. And this is what it looks like with just the red distortion. The flag is waving quite regularly because the red map is very smoothly blurred. And the flag is not yet attached to the flagpole. But there's two distortion lines and two distortion channels on the map. In this second line we take a sample from the green channel on the distortion map. And the VEC2 size has its own two scale factors, size ZW. But I left the VEC2 time the same as in the first line. 
To mix those two samples, we got the R or G uniform. We multiply the first line by R or G inverted, and the second line just by R or G, and add up those two results. So if R or G is 0.8, we get 80% of the green distortion and 20% of the red distortion. Like this, we can add some kind of randomness to the flag's movement. So far, the waving flag you see here was just with the red channel applied. Now this is what the effect would look like with only the green channel. As the map is much messier, so is the movement of the flag. And this is both channels mixed by 0.5. We can kinda see the soft movement from the red and the erratic movement from the green channel. Now we need to tie the flag to the pole. And the information needed to do that is stored in the blue channel. The less blue there is, the less the flag can move. In this overlay I'm trying to show the gradient on the map's blue channel. Every pixel left of the yellow line has no blue. Every pixel to the right of the blue line is fully blue. And the pixels in between are a curved gradient. So by taking a blue sample from the distort texture at VB text chord, we now got control over where the flag is allowed to distort by how much. To understand how this is all tied together, we need to look at the next line of code. We're creating a VEC2 offset variable by multiplying the distort value we got from the red and green channel with the effect strength factor and the fixture from the blue channel. Since strength is multiplied as a VEC2 of positive and negative strength, the flag will be squashed a bit to the left along the x-axis and pulled downwards along the y-axis. Flipping those signs would stretch the x-axis and the flag will be pushed upwards. With the offset calculated, we can get the base texture scholar at VV text code plus the offset. But I think this looks a bit unconvincing yet. Somehow the flag lacks depth still. But we can fix that by adding some fake specularity. Now this is a cheap but rather convincing trick. I'm just adding a value to the final colors RGB. Max distort minus 0.45 capped at negative 0.2 means we're turning the distort value which normally would range from 0 to 1 into something from negative 0.2 to positive 0.55. Then we multiply this value with the blue channel, the strength and the specularity factor and by adding this to the final color we reduce or increase the brightness. The last step I'd like to do is just a gimmick and not necessarily super useful. But I was thinking the golden thread on the flag would probably get darker and brighter than the rough blue texture since it's a shinier material. And since we still got one color channel left, the alpha channel, we can store that information there. So this is the alpha channel. And the gray is about 30% alpha. Don't ever make it 0% or TMS will set the RGB channels to zero and black means no distortion. So we just take an alpha sample from the distortion map at the same coordinates where we took the final color sample from the base texture and multiply that with the specularity. Now the golden thread gets brighter and darker than the rest. The effect is not super convincing since we're ignoring glossiness, but I still kind of like it. And that's how this shader works, now it's time to look at the project. And this is the project file linked in the description beneath this video. We got several sprites this time. The distortion map, first without using the alpha channel, and then also with using the alpha channel. The flag sprite we already saw, mind where the origin is, I've set it to middle left. It has to be where you want a flag to be attached to the pole. And I also added a triangular flag and the rectangular unicolored flag. Then a flagpole sprite, again mind where the origin is because that's where we're drawing the origin of the flag sprite. And finally a pixel art flag. The pixel art flag can't have too many details or the effect will look too nervous. That's why I just made a simple quadrant flag and a pixel art flagpole. Mind that the flag sprite and the distortion sprites all have to be on a separate texture page. Here's the shader flag distortion. We won't need the vertex shader. And here's the object flag distortion. The object sprite is the flagpole we've just seen. We'll go through the code in a minute. And this is the room. On the main layer are two instances of the flag object. And on the GUI layer, we got nine sliders and a trigger button. As always in my demos, the title region only holds some information, but is not important for the shader to work. In the sprite and shader region, I'm setting up an array of sprites for the different flag sprites and a sprite variable that refers to the array's position. So sprite zero means sprite flag detailed rectangle. Then we need the distort sprite and its texture ID. Next, I'm setting up the shader and all the uniforms. And here's a uniform only for demo purposes. 
you show result, as in the last video, is only there so we can draw the distortion value instead of the flag's color to see how the distortion value affects the flag's movement. And finally we got a time variable and I've set it to a random starting value so the flag instances won't wave in sync. Beneath that I just got some code to demonstrate the pixel art flag later. And again as always, the GUI region is not important for the shader to work, it's just to set up the sliders and the trigger button in the demo room. The step event is not important either. I'm just setting a new flag sprite by modding through the sprites array if the trigger button is clicked. Once more, the important stuff is in the draw event. First, I'm advancing the time and grabbing all the uniform values from the sliders. Strength ranges from 0 to 0 0.3 and specularity from 0 to 20. Everything else from 0 to 1. First, I'm drawing the flagpole with draw self. Then I'm turning on the linear texture filter on the GPU to get a smoother distortion. After that, we can just set the shader and pass the uniforms. Mind that for size, I'm passing in four values because the size inside the shader is a VEC4. Those four values are the X and Y scale factors for the red and then the green channel. Once the shade is prepared, we can draw the sprite. Now, since I've matched the flag sprite's origin with the flag pole's origin, we can just draw the flag at the instance's X and Y coordinates. Then after resetting the shader, I'm also turning off the linear texture filter, since that's the standard for my demo project. Now just a quick peek into the shader code. We talked about this code in length already. The only thing new here is the show result uniform in the header and the last line before the output. All that line does is mix the value of distort with the final color. So the show result slider allows us to understand better how this shader works. Now we can finally run this project and see the flag wave in the wind. Strength sets by how much the flag gets distorted. And time determines the speed. Red or green sets how much we'll see of the red or the green distortion map. And with the optional slider show result, we can display the distort value instead of the flag color. So now we can see the distortion of the smooth and calm red channel. And now we can see the more erratic movement of the green channel. And this is an equal mix of both. I'm setting RG to show only the red channel's distortion so I can show what the size factors do. The first size factor is to scale the red channel's x axis. And the second is for the red channel's y axis. Now the green channel. The third size factor is to scale the green channel's x-axis. And the fourth factor is for the green channel's y-axis. With the specularity uniform we can de- or increase the illusion of depth. I've set up the distortion map with the specularity stored in the alpha channel, so the golden flag is reacting more to the specularity factor than the blue. We can also use other sprites like this triangle flag and it still looks good. And here's the cool thing. If we use this bland flag, without specularity it looks a bit boring. But as soon as we add specularity it looks like two different threads were used to weave this cloth, as if the symbol is made of silk. If you use this shade in a game, I'd probably keep strength and R or G dynamic while the size factors can be static. And if you constantly change and tween strength and R or G, you'll get an endless randomness to the movement. Now I just want to show two more things. The first is how to flip the flag if you want the wind to come from the other side. The shader still works if we flip the x-axis of the sprite by scaling with a negative 1 when drawing. So this works, though flipping the wind in runtime will probably be more difficult to look good. It's not a cloth simulation after all. And the second thing I wanted to show is this shader can also work with pixel art. In create event, I'm just adding the already prepared code to set up the camera and use the pixel art sprites. Like this, the flag looks super smooth and maybe a bit too smooth for some pixel art styles, but we can make it look a bit more traditional. 
In Joyvent, we turned on the linear texture filter for all textures inside the shader. But if we only interpolate the distort texture, but not the base texture, it will look a lot more pixel artsy already. And if you think the specularity is too smooth still, you'd need to change the way the specularity is calculated. I haven't spent much time in this, but here's the first step in the right direction. I'm just rounding the distort to a third and removed the max function and the alpha channel factor. I'm not entirely happy, but also don't plan to improve that part because I frankly do like smooth, high bit pixel art and am happy with the first two versions. And that's finally it for this video. I still like to add two more map distortion shaders to the series before moving on to a new topic. The next video will probably be a flame distortion and then I plan to add a shockwave distortion. Until next time.